Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is some of the attributes for XUnit. One of the um, attributes that are commonly used in NUnit is the category attribute. So category basically lets you set a tra trait um, or apply categories to a set of tests so that you can run those specific tests from within a command line or locally or CI process, et cetera. Um, XUnit doesn't have the category attribute, uh, but it does have what's called a trait attribute. And that is basically the same thing as a category. So if I go down here, I could go um, trait. Uh, and you can actually see that it tries to guess what I want to write here. So uh, I'll tab that out. Um, and then basically, if we look at the trait attribute, um, it's made to allow us to apply a name and a value to uh, the trait. So if I put category as, let's see, API test, um, and then save, let's build to just in case. You can see down here that our attribute is now added to um, the traits column down here. Um, so that's, that's super convenient. Uh, another thing I wanna talk about is data-driven attributes. So uh, I mentioned earlier that there's two separate types of test attributes associated with XUnit. One is fact and the other is um, called theory. So theory is basically um, data-driven properties. So instead of fact, we would have, um, oops, <laughs> I can tab right. Um, instead of fact, we would have a theory here. Uh, and below that theory is where we would set up our inline data. So inline data basically means um, what is the um, data that we're gonna be passing. So you can have as many as you want. And then as long as your async or your test method can accept those parameters or your, you, you um, over, put the overloads in. So let's take a look at like, for example, our inline data for this would probably be the, um, the parameter that's being passed to the API, right? So if we go here and we put in, uh, what's happening here is it's complaining because my, my test method doesn't have the parameter yet. So we will add a string and say brew, right? So now whatever, and then whatever line that is, is that's, that's where it'll be added in, right? So if I had a second um, parameter here, I need to have a second um, parameter down here. Now, if we want to make this data driven, we can actually set the, um, we'll pass in brewery to our get call, right? Because that's what we want to set it to. Um, and to fix that, we'll need to go to our definition of our get brewery. Uh, we'll need to make sure that this accepts a, um, a string. Um, and you'll notice that there's a couple of things already here that is, um, we already have a private string in here that's gonna do what we wanted it to do, but inline data that we've set up. So I'm just gonna delete that. And what happens is that now we have a data-driven method. So if I call this, I can go to, um, everything's set up to be able to do what we need it to do. So once we're in here, I can uh, rerun the test and we'll see how the data-driven portion went. So we'll go down here, open this up. Uh, we'll run it. And now our, our XUI test is um, data-driven. Just to validate that this is indeed actually working or checking, we'll just put in an incorrect um, name there for our city and then we'll run it again this time it should fail um, expected etc uh, and that is basically the four basic trait uh, the four basic attributes that you would use for x unit on a daily basis um, on most calls now things will change obviously as you start to use more and more complex data uh, and your data sets get larger. Uh, but beyond that, that's really the, the meat and potatoes of XUnit and using XUnit for API testing.